Hey everyone, Dan here. It is Thursday, July 1st. Today we're going to take a look at Clover Health. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. And also feel free to comment below with your thoughts, opinions, ideas, questions. Those things help myself and everyone who watches the video after you. All right, so uh, we're mostly going to look at the most recent data that's come out on Clove. But first, I thought, you know, while we're here, we might as well take a quick look at the chart. So, you know, as you would know by now, um, Clove showed some promise as it broke from underneath this downtrend previously, was following this channel up briefly, just for a few days, fell out of it, um, started to move sideways, slightly down, consolidating, and wasn't able to re-enter the channel. So now it's stuck in this um, sort of like a trading week or so of just consolidation. So, you know, kind of waiting for it to choose its next big move. And, uh, you know, it's really just kind of bouncing around between these support zones. So I don't, you know, feel a strong need to add in any additional zones or adjust this chart in any way. Um, the most important thing from the bullish side of things is either for it to come down toward 1232 or maybe sort of like um, double bottom in this area here. And then have a nice bounce off of either there or that 1232 level and then get support at 1348 and then work from there. Uh, if it can do that, then, you know, it definitely has an opportunity to run back toward 15 because there's a lot of run room once it gets support over that 1348 level. But uh, it's proven to be quite challenging at the moment. And, you know, the data will tell us a little bit of why. RSI really low, as you would imagine, getting very, very close to over sold. Um, so leaving a bunch of room to run up there if it wants. And then the MACD, obviously, um, you know, some bearish momentum here. The bulls came in very briefly, but that died down very, very quickly. And now we see bearish momentum kind of expanding, you know, getting a little bit of a second wind here. So we'll see if that can play out or if this green candle can sort of make a shift in that um, and push it back up. So let's talk about the data. So the fails to deliver data is what came out from the first half of June. Um, and basically a fail to deliver is when you pay for a stock you know, you send your money somewhere, you're supposed to then receive the stock. It appears as though that happens relatively instantaneously. But what's happening in the background is there's a couple of days where the actual uh, swapping of those things is supposed to happen. The cash goes into the seller's account and the stock, the actual stock that was purchased goes into the buyer's account. When the latter doesn't happen, when you send your money out, but a stock doesn't actually get delivered to your broker to place into your account. That's called failure to deliver. Fails to deliver can happen for a lot of legitimate reasons. And there are, um, there's time periods in which, you know, they're allowed to kind of reconcile that. There are also reasons, um, that it can happen such as naked short selling where you were sold a share that doesn't actually exist. So there's nothing really to deliver to you. Uh, in that case, we can look for something like dates for an aged fail, meaning, um, a, a transaction that's not settled within 30 days of the trade. And if, you know, a large portion of those were um, sold short from a naked <laughs> perspective, <laughs> nakedly sold short, then um, there may be buying pressure coming into the market leading up to that 30 day window because um, the folks who need to deliver those shares need to buy them on the open markets and then deliver them to the person who originally bought them. So if we look here at the Clove data, uh, you know, here we have data now through June 13th. Um, and we do see a few spikes in the data. June 6th, you had over 1.5 million failures to deliver, uh, over a million again on June 8th. Um, this is a little outside of our window, May 24th, but I would pay attention to these couple of dates, June 6th and June 8th. So 30 days from those dates, are July 6th and July 8th. Um, so, you know, if we go ahead and look here, this might lead to some buying pressure in Clove, like very, very imminently. Um, like if it doesn't happen today, I would expect it to happen tomorrow. Um, if it hasn't happened already like this, my question is, you know, was, was this activity a bunch of that? Because basically, if, you know, very many of those two and a half, three million shares that were um, 
failed to deliver on, if a bunch of those were naked short sellers who needed to buy up shares in the open market to send them to whoever bought them before that 30 day window, um, you know, they may have been buying in advance because the date's coming up and with the holiday coming, um, you know, July 6th is going to be the first day back trading after the holiday. So in, in my opinion, they don't often wait until the, um, the date that the aged fail is coming to pass. So they wouldn't wait necessarily until July 6th to do a bunch of buying and delivering because they need settlement times again to receive the shares and, and then be able to pass them along. So there's at least a few days before where they're trying to catch low price points that maybe they have had a hand in driving down, shorting the stock down to a lower price, and then buying it up, causing a bunch of buying pressure to come into the market in addition to just the normal buying pressure. Um, so that's why it can help bump it up and then delivering those shares before, you know, July 6th and July 8th. So if that were the case, we may have already seen it here and or we may see another big push by tomorrow. But to me, that feels a little bit late. So um, I'm almost wondering if, you know, late on Thursday, which is today and or early tomorrow, you know, we get a, a bunch of buying pressure if this hadn't already taken care of it. Uh, beyond that, if we take a look at Ortex, you know, we still have a lot of short interest in this one. Um, last reported short interest of 41 million estimated short interest as a percentage of the floats currently 36%. So even though that that's slightly down, it's still very, very high percentage of the free float on loan, almost half. Um, and then cost to borrow 48.62. So still is quite expensive for short sellers to borrow these shares in order to short sell them. So they're not going to be wanting to hold for a very long time. And so that, you know, might cause some sort of like herky jerky action or some very, very strong short positions to come in as they're trying to sort of um, weed out some, some bad borrowed shares that they had um, taken on and are paying high fees for. This is the big one here, currently 100% utilization rate. So 100% on the utilization rate means that all shares available to borrow or lend at a lending program have in fact been lent. So that is a factor, in my opinion, that could lead to naked short selling. If you're unable to borrow shares, but you want to continue to short a stock, what can you do? Well, you can short a phantom share. <laughs> And um, and then deal with having to deliver it later on. But if you can sell short a phantom share at thirteen dollars, and then you can drive the price down to eleven, and buy it at eleven, and then deliver it, then hey, you made not only the proceeds from the initial sale, but then the difference between um, you know what you bought to actually deliver it, um, plus then you know buying it at a lower price to return it to, you know, the broker if you had shorted it legitimately. So another reason why shorts continue to pile in to drive it down further. Um, but, you know, here you see the volume. We can make this bigger. Um, well, I, I, while we're on this, we just say, so today we've seen short interest come in additionally. This is what kind of makes me wonder if we're if it's trying to be driven down further in order to buy up a bunch of cheaper shares Tomorrow, to me, that if that's the case, that would basically look more like the the folks who needed to deliver shares by July six potentially were the bulk of this. And again, this I'm not saying that this was caused by that, but it was a contributing factor. There's other buying pressure that comes in, right? It's not just because of this, but these are additional buying pressures that could sort of like lead us to look for dates at which the stock might get get a bump up a little bit. But if there does become buying pressure later today or tomorrow, what I would think that that's for is for, you know, fails to deliver that need to deliver by July 8th, because these should settle by then without, um, you know, much issue or much question. So um, if that does happen, that that's what I would be looking for on that end of things. So in that case, you may be seeing a bunch of short interest coming in additionally today, because they're looking to drive the price down further to get the cheapest shares possible, say tomorrow, um, and then deliver them uh, deliver a cheaper share than they than they sold. Uh, if we look here on 
the Ortex version. So we see here this blue line that's moving up. That is the exchange reported short interest. So short interest continuing to increase, even though this is appears much more flat than this area, this is still slightly increasing. And you do see as the price of, these are all um, price bars, right? So um, you, you do see as the price was increasing significantly on Clove um, through the like end of May and, and the beginning of June, that fails to deliver, which are the yellow bars, were also dramatically increasing. So again, this to me um, looks as though these are strategic um, fails to deliver, where the price is getting really high, the shorts are continuing to pile in, um, and failures to deliver are happening at the price peak, and then they're getting delivered um, and settled eventually after the price is much lower because the shorts piled in to drive the price down further, buy a cheaper share than you sold, deliver that. There was never any broker lending it in order to have to like return them a share. So, you know, you're kind of good to go at that point. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I see in this most recent data. And that's what I would look for in the coming days, basically, um, you know, potentially later today, potentially tomorrow. So today we might see some further driving down by the shorts is what it appears at the moment. And then we may see a bit of a pop tomorrow if those folks who need to deliver by July 8th, um, I guess a couple of criteria, if <laughs> any extent of those were shares that didn't actually exist in the first place and need to exist to be delivered, um, those would, uh, you know, induce buying pressure. And if this didn't account for much or any of the July eighth um, fails to deliver that need to be need to be provided by July eighth, I guess the June eighth fails to deliver that need to be provided by July eighth, as to not go into the realm of an aged fail, which comes with additional fines and fees and things like that. All right, well, that's what I'm looking for for Clove at the moment. We'll do a deeper dive into the chart uh, in the coming days, so we'll keep an eye, eye out for that. And, um, you know, feel free to share these videos if you enjoy them, if you think that they're valuable, if you find use out of them. Um, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, any of these things are, are very helpful, and I appreciate it. All right, well, that'll do it for this one. I wish you the best as the trading week finishes up, and I will see you in the next video.